Guess what guys, it's time for a new list. I wanted to do this for a while, ever since I was back in Santa Cruz for the spring quarter, but I've been seeing more movies than normal, I've been busier, and by the time I had some free time, it was nearing final, so now that I'm on summer, I present to you my top 10 favorite science fiction films. At the end of the video, I'll explain why parts 1, 2, and 3 are missing. But with that said, let's get into the list. Number 10 is the 1968 classic, Planet of the Apes. A movie that, if you just look at it, seems outdated, especially when it comes to the ape makeup and, I guess, Charlton Heston's overacting. But when you really watch the movie, it is a classic. It has a great social commentary on the whole situation. It's not action-packed, something that the 2001 remake failed miserably at. And even though Charlton Heston can seem to overact at times, he delivers some really memorable lines. Like, get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! Or, well, you know what, that quote comes at the end, and if you haven't seen the ending, it is one of the... If you have not seen this movie, then you're in a cave because this movie is so good and it has one of the biggest twists in movie history that for that one person out there who has not seen it I won't say what it is but you probably have had it ruined for you in the past but regardless Planet of the Apes is a great great movie number nine is probably one of the most original science fiction films I've seen in a while or at least the most impressive in terms of how much it cost District 9 it was produced by Peter Jackson after he failed to get a Halo movie made, and it only cost $30 million. When you look at the movie, it looks like it cost over 100 And it's got some really cool moments to it. The aliens look neat. It has elements of a documentary or, like, mockumentary. Like Planet of the Apes, it delivered a neat social commentary. And... At the end, it's really action-packed and gory. It's not a movie for the faint of heart, but it's pretty entertaining, really a surprise, and it truly deserved its Best Picture nomination. And yes, I cannot wait for the director's next film, Elysium, in two months, so... But until then, I will cherish District 9. For my number 8 film, fans of this long-running series should recognize these four notes. Now, which movie am I going to pick? Well, I've already reviewed it, and I haven't seen many Star Trek movies, so it's going to be the 2009 Star Trek. Not much of a surprise if you know me, but hey, what can you do? This movie, I picked this over Into Darkness, even though I like both movies equally, because it was the introduction to Star Trek for me. It was a great introduction, made me a Star Trek fan, among other people who didn't know much about Star Trek or didn't care for Star Trek. And it's a movie that I can easily say, if you're not a fan of it, you're going to love it. Great action when compared to the static movements of the original series. All the actors do a fantastic job. I love how it's not just a reboot, but it shares elements of the original continuity with Leonard Nimoy as the older Spock. But it made it to a sense where, like, this is a new series, anything could happen and it makes sense. I've already reviewed the movie and prepped for Star Trek Into Darkness. I love this movie, I love the sequel. Even though J.J. Abrams is off to do Star Wars Episode 7, I am eager to see what a Star Trek 3 would be like. I hope it happens. I think it's gonna happen, and I'm excited for it when it happens. Number 7 is what I believe to be his most overlooked film, if not one of two of his most overlooked films. Uh, James Cameron's The Abyss from 1989. I've only seen the director's cut of this movie, which I've heard is the best. I don't know how the theatrical cut differs, but just judging this film by the director's cut, it's pretty damn good. It's got great characters, not quite on the level as in Aliens or the Terminator series, but they're still good, they're still likable. Michael Bean makes an effective villain. That CG water tube I, at the time, looked impressive, and it kind of is, but it doesn't hold a candle to the T-1000 in terms of, like, groundbreaking special effects for the time. 
It's got some cool action. It's got an interesting ending. The director's cut is nearly three hours long, so it's worth seeing. I've not seen the theatrical cut. I might go back and see it on my own sometime, but for now, I'll cherish the director's cut of The Abyss. Number six is Steven Spielberg's first film after making Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Like Jaws, this movie went incredibly over budget and became a really good success. It got nominated for several Academy Awards in 1977, including one for Best Director. So that's where Spielberg's Best Director Oscar for Jaws went. It went to Close Encounters. This is the only Spielberg film that I'm aware of that he wrote, which I'm surprised why he doesn't write anymore. Uh, whatever the case, it's really neat. It's got some good ideas. Great cast. Richard Dreyfuss is really good in the movie. Has a good tune by his main guy, John Williams. And this is a great alien movie that Spielberg made for adults. Number five is another Spielberg alien movie, but this time one he made for the kids. If you can't tell by the music that's playing right now, then you are living in a rock. That is E.T. The Extraterrestrial from 1982. This was the movie to outgross Star Wars as the highest grossing film of all time. Well, when it came out, now it's Avatar. It's got a really great score by John Williams again. This seemed to be Spielberg's passion project after Close Encounters. It was filmed in the order it was edited in. It's got... E.T. is not only a great animatronic effect, but he's also a great character once you get down to it. The kid actors are good. And what's interesting about the story is that it's both the same for the alien and the kid. The alien is isolated on Earth after his species accidentally leaves him behind. And then the kid is feeling some isolation because of his parents' divorce. So basically, from both sides, it's, for lack of a better word, an alien movie. One that works not only for kids, but adults also. So, really, if you haven't seen E.T., where are you? What are you doing where you haven't seen that movie? It's a movie that should be loved, cherished, and viewed by everyone on Earth. Number four is a movie that I reviewed back on my own channel, and is the only foreign film on this list. And it can only be described with this one sound effect. That's right, Godzilla. The reason I put this on here and so high is the fact that, aside from I love this movie, it has a very serious tone when it comes to it. It's got a very strong anti-nuclear theme where the monster is not just a monster for the sake of having a Japanese King Kong, but a metaphor for the H-bomb. It's got some good acting from its cast, a haunting score by Akira Ifukube. And 59 years later, this movie is still regarded as a classic, ever since it got released in the United States in 2004. Uh, I already reviewed this on my old channel, AlexG8462, so you can check out that review for more details on that because, I mean, I just love this movie. Godzilla is my fourth favorite science fiction film of all time. Now, number three, you can't have a science fiction list without this movie in it, Aliens from James Cameron, the second in the Alien series, and as far as I'm concerned, the last Alien movie. There's an Alien 3 and 4, I've never heard of them, don't care to see them, this is the last Alien movie. Okay, as you can tell, I'm trying to ignore that those two movies exist, but Aliens, really, this should have been the end of this series, it should have been just Alien, Aliens, and if you want, Prometheus. But Aliens is, I think, the superior movie. While Alien is more horror-oriented, this is more action-oriented. And it kicks ass in its own way that Alien kicks ass. So Gordon Weaver is back in this movie, this time in a role that gave her an Oscar nomination. The Aliens move spectacularly. Sometimes I keep forgetting that they're just props because they move so well. It's got some great characters, quotable lines, creepy atmosphere at times. It's so action-packed. The one problem I might have with it is Newt. She seems to be very annoying at times, and the actress who plays her is not that good. But Newt is just a kid, and she's important to the plot, and I can give that a pass because despite Newt, Aliens is an awesome, awesome movie. If you really have not seen Aliens, or yeah, you shouldn't. Where are you? 
but if you don't like aliens, then you've got some problems. Numbers two and one were so difficult to pick which one is in which position. So, I mean, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna make a number two and one. I'm not just gonna put two combinations, but in my mind, they could easily switch back and forth. And in terms of number two, it was hard for me to pick which one of these three movies I actually liked in the Back to the Future trilogy. Yeah, I know it's kind of cheating, but this is my list and I can do what I want with it. Because of the time travel aspect, I place this under science fiction. I know a lot of people think Back to the Future more of a comedy or high school movie, but because time travel is such an essential part to this trilogy, I put it under science fiction. The original Back to the Future is so well written, got great characters, Marty McFly played by Michael J. Fox and Dr. Emmett Brown is played by Christopher Lloyd. It made me want a DeLorean even though they're, they went out of stock long before I was born. It's got really funny moments, as I mentioned, clever writing, the greatest movie theme that was not composed by John Williams, and it just leaves you feeling good at the end. If there was ever a movie to make me feel better after a really stressful day, this is it. Back to the Future 2 is just as good as, in my opinion because we get to see the, at this point, impossible future since 2015 is two years away. But hey, it's cool that we saw hoverboards, self-lacing Nikes, flying cars, Jaws 19, the latter which I'm happy will not be a reality, and it shows the tampering of space and time. Doc and Marty are still as good as ever together. And then we conclude with Back to the Future 3. If I had to pick the weakest link, it would probably be 3. But because this is one of those trilogies that they all kind of become one movie, 3 is really good also. The western element is kind of neat. It does have a satisfying bookend to the point where they cannot make another Back to the Future movie. Yeah, Clara might be annoying at times, but she didn't like irritate me at all, so I'm like, ugh, get her off screen. But it is the weakest of the three movies, but they, but all of them together create my second favorite science fiction movie or movies of all time. I absolutely love, love, love Back to the Future. You already know what number one is. If you managed to stick around through this whole video, you notice that there's one science fiction film or series that I did not talk about. I may have mentioned it, but I did not bring it up and did not pop up on this list until now. For changing the entire film industry, for being the ultimate definition of how to make a film trilogy, and for creating the most memorable film scores of all time, the original Star Wars trilogy. This film marked the birth of New Hollywood, was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen as a kid, and has continued to inspire several dozen of millions of films afterwards. The original Star Wars was made in 1977, told a classic tale, gave us really memorable characters. I could quote this movie from beginning to end, the best score John Williams has ever made. It was, it is such a great movie. Empire Strikes Back is better than the original. Great score, the best twist I feel in a motion picture. It brought the darkness to a new level. And then we conclude with Return of the Jedi. Like Back to the Future 3, this is the weakest link, but that's not saying much. It's still good. It's just that Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back are better. But they all form one story, thus I see them as one movie. And despite the constant changes throughout the special editions, the DVD versions, and the Blu-ray versions, they are still the same movies. Yes, the changes can be frustrating at times and with the blu-ray changes I'm actually starting to get a bit annoyed at them but they are still the same movies now that Disney's got a hold of the franchise maybe the original theatrical versions can be released in the original form on blu-ray so they can be appreciated more but the original Star Wars trilogy is my favorite favorite science fiction film of all time may the force be with you Star Wars always so that is my list of my favorite science fiction films of all time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're wondering what happened to parts 1, 2, and 3 of favorite films per genre, they're on my other channel, and throughout the week I will be re-releasing them 
onto this channel. So stay tuned throughout the week so you can see my favorite animated films, my favorite horror films, and my favorite action movies. So till then, live long and prosper. May the force be with you, and I will see you guys later. Bye.